Hi guys, welcome to another session of Project Demon Slayers in which I attempt to cosplay the entire squad. Today is a really special session because we're going to make Nezuko-chan! I went bargain hunting this morning and I got some really cheap fabrics to actually make her. The goal actually in this vlog is to make her in one sitting, so we're gonna be in for a speed build. I hope you guys enjoy. Make sure to hit a like and subscribe and please consider becoming a supporter on Patreon or buying one of my cosplay books from akwidu.com. Enjoy the video! So first things first, we have to pattern the garment and cut out the fabric. I'm gonna start off with the most repetitive and the simplest task, which is the checkered obi. All that is, is a bunch of squares sewn together in alternate colors and then put together into a belt. Conveniently, I found out that the size and shape of the uh, rectangles on the checkered obi is roughly the same as a rewards card or a credit card. So I've just gone and repetitively traced out the credit cards until I've got enough squares. So now, it's time to cut. There we go. I wish it took just an instant, but we've got a bunch of rectangles now. What we're going to do here is pretty much just daisy chain them like this. One red, one white, one red, that kind of thing. And then sew that into a line, and then we make three rows, and then sew those three rows together. To just a very mild dose of repeat your cry, I have now the first row. So red, white, red, white, alternate squares until I've got a strip that can just go around my waist with a tiny bit of an allowance for maybe like a velcro or um, a press stud to clip the belt together. This is one, I'm gonna repeat two more times. Ta da! Three rows! only mildly painful and dare I say a little bit fun as well. All I need to do now is sew these three separate rows together so it becomes one wide obi belt. Before I sew though I must pin them together so I make sure the rectangles will line up with each other and not just go all over the place like this. Yeah so let's pin. Ta-da! All sewn together. This is our checkered obi. It goes onto the waist nice and snug like this. It's just right size for me. I've also added in half a row of checkers on each side and that becomes the uh, seam allowance to fold over a thin sheet of foam to make this obi nice and rigid. To finish off the obi, we're going to give it a good old iron so that the squares can sit really flatly, nice and sharp, and there's no bubbles. And then put a thin piece of PVA foam inside it, fold the fabric over, and pin it down like this. Repeat all through the edges. And then top stitch to finish. What I'm gonna do is the black howdy jacket that she's got. It's actually the easiest garment to put together in the whole project because it is a bunch of rectangles. But I'm gonna start off with the sleeve. See this is just a folded over square literally and I'm just gonna sew a straight line down the edge to put it together into a tube. And that's literally one sleeve done. See? Like that. Ugh. Next, I'm just gonna fold the end over like that and hem the edge of the sleeve. Hi! Several minutes later, I've got two sleeves. They're literally just two rectangular tubes on my arms. And now we're ready to put the main torso bits together. The main panels in the middle are another bunch of giant rectangles. There's one giant rectangle for the back, 
and two rectangular strips for the front. I like to sew them together starting by the shoulder seams, so we're going to do that first. This is what it looks like so far. One giant rectangle for the back, two narrow rectangles for the front, and it's just sewn together by the top line there. The side is loose at the moment, so we're going to line up the sleeve and make a snip before we continue. Here's my rectangular tube of a sleeve. We line it up with the main garment here, and we just make a snip right where at the armpit is. And then after that snip, I'm going to sew a line all the way from the armpit down to the bottom of the garment. Afterwards, we would have an armhole and we would sew the arms to the main garment. And we've made the snip, time to sew. When we're sewing, we want to start the sew line at the corner of the snip. This is the armpit and we're going to sew a long line all the way to the hem of the jacket. Ta-da! We have an armhole. So now we're just going to sew the sleeve into the armhole. Ooh, that's the top layer done. I made it much bigger than usual because I want this jacket to make me look smaller so I can be chibi and cute as Nezuko. Next up, we start the real repeat till cry of this project, which is to turn this plain pink fabric into this fabulous hexagon flower print here. And I'm doing it by hand because it was the cheaper option for me. So I'm going to show you how I did mine. I took two pieces of paper, drew a triangle on each and stuck them together. Make sure the two edges are the same and that it's foldable in the middle so it's symmetrical and also this way as well. It's pretty much just a six-pointed star. What I do is I'll line it up with the fabric, get a fabric ink marker or a Copic marker, take the pointy end and just dot each point of the star like this. So I've got some dots on the fabric now. Join up the dots to make the six pointed star. One, two, I totally forgot to keep counting. But you get the idea. Just join up all the dots until you've got the star going. And that's the first step done. So we've got a star. Take the ruler and draw a straight line straight across, connecting the two insides of the star. Turn it on a right angle, and draw the intersection down the middle, like that. And then from here, we're just going to take the ruler, match it to the ends, and draw a line to the, to the middle. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. Now I'm doing it straight away with the marker, but if you're afraid of stuffing up, you can mark everything with a pencil first and then go over it again with the marker. It's just less terrifying that way because uh, once you draw the lines on, if you make a mistake, that's it. You can't really erase it and go again. I'm pretty comfortable with not making a mistake with the marker right now, so I just went straight for it. After you've drawn the main star with the intersections in the middle, you just got to join up each of the points to make a hexagon. One, two, three, 
four, five, and six. Six sided flower slash star. Ta da! Once you've done that, just move across and repeat. Done. So now we're going to make a sew line from the armpit all the way down to the bottom. Now I like to sew my arms um, by flipping the entire garment inside out and pinning the uh, arm into the inside of the armhole. So I'm sewing everything in inverse and then when that's all done we flip it out the right way and it'll be great. The sleeve is pinned to the armhole now. All I have to do now is just to sew around this hole and then flip it over. Ta-da! Now we have a top. It's very square. The next step is just to hem everything so the fabric doesn't fray. What I'm doing with the hem is a basic rolling hem, also known as a French hem or just a double hem. It's really easy to do. You just fold the hem once and you fold it twice, pin it like this and then sew all across here. Noom. Noom. This next little part is really really simple. I'm just going to make an illusion of the inner white kimono that she has. If you have a look at Nezuko's picture, um, she'll have a pink layer and then underneath there's a white layer. But because I don't want to die in hot weather, I'm just going to make the illusion by having just one white sausage and sewing it onto the underside of the pink kimono. Now we're just nooming the sausage together before attaching it to the pink kimono. So this is the illusion we created. We've got the white layer underneath and then we've got the pink layer on top because we can't be fucked and we don't want to die in the hot weather. We've just got a little strip underneath. The next bit we're doing is her skirt which is also um, kind of like a butt flap that I've made it into. The reason I've made it into a butt flap instead of the proper kimono split is because it uses a lot of fabric and I want to save fabric and money and I want a light costume to travel with. What I've done is made the butt flap with pink and then cut another bigger butt flap with the white. This is the lining plus the fold over. We're going to imitate the kimono slit down the uh, middle and I've already done it on one side. Have a look, it's like a little scrunchy but not too messy kind of look and how I've done that is take the white bit, fold it over and fold it over again, kind of like a trimming. I've done that on the straight edge all the way to the end. Once the um, butt flap starts to curve, I pull it a little bit, like so, hold it back down, and I grab the next bit of fabric, fold it over, and pull it a little bit. Just pull it over a little bit like that, so that the, um, the bottom starts to lift off the floor. And then repeat, fold over, pull a little bit, fold over, pull a little bit. And then if you find yourself, um, you've made a little bit of a mess, you can go back and fix a little bit of it. But try not to move it too much, because the more you move it, the messy it's going to become. I found anyway. And yep, that's the fold done. So we're just going to pin 
this down so it doesn't move. And all that's left to do on this butt flap is just hand stitch the folds in. You can't really machine sew this one just because the lines are going to be really ugly. So, hand stitch hell, here we come. Ta da! Yay! Big giant pink curry puff. <laughs> that didn't take too long at all, and it looks pretty similar to the reference picture and without having to go full authentic. Now we're ready to put this with the rest of the costume and finish off. So there you have it, Nezuko is complete in one sitting. I did pretty well. I will be putting on the entire cosplay properly in an upcoming episode very soon. But for now, see you next time. Stay crafty.